Okay, Shalom. Want to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, Bahashim, Racha, Kodash. Double honors to my apostles and elders of Great Millstone who rule well. Salutations to the Lord's whole four elect scattered abroad. All right, I'm the brother Taz of War. Back at you again with another lesson. And uh, Lord's willing, I pray. You know, these lessons be edifying to those of the hopeful elect and that you may get something from it to build upon your faith toward the Lord. All right. You know, I was just sitting here meditating and just thinking and going over my notes, you know, reading. And, um, you know, here at Great Millstone, all right, through the spirit and power of your how about you how shy, all right, we, we understand and believe that King Solomon is actually also Yahweh Shai, all right, which gets into reincarnation, okay, and reincarnation is nothing new, all right, when it comes to the scriptures. The men of old and ancient times, they knew of reincarnation and they didn't make a big deal about it. Today it's a big deal because you have Christianity, you know, these so-called scholars that you know learn from these theologian schools and they have this curriculum of how they understand the scriptures you know they believe in they don't believe that the bible teaches reincarnation now reincarnation the word re means back carnation means flesh so back in the flesh and i believe you can look it up you know for yourself etymology the word reincarnation I believe another word for it is embodiment all right so you know uh, Yahweh Shai he also and Yahweh Shai is who the world ignorantly called Jesus Christ all right Yahweh Shai also told us all right that Elijah was John the Baptist okay and and that was to come to fulfill prophecy, all right? John the Baptist was a forerunner, a forerunner for Yahweh Shai, you know, so his presence would be known, okay? And then even the men that were the Pharisees, you know, which they knew the scriptures, okay? They understood that what a Messiah would come, all right, from the root and stem of Jesse, or the root of David in the stem of Jesse, okay? But what it was, those that came against Yahweh Shai, you know, they didn't believe, and they didn't truly understand the scriptures, because if they did, they wouldn't have questioned and try to trip up Yahweh Shai in his words. You know, a lot was going on back then too, was these men were sitting in their, in their law seats, so to say, and Yahweh Shai, because he was spreading and teaching the truth, which he is the truth, all right? He's the word made flesh, okay? He um, he was teaching something that they didn't want to consider, but they didn't consider because they didn't understand that the Messiah, that he was the Messiah, all right? You know? So, without further ado, let's read Psalms 110 and one, a Psalm of David. Yahweh said, well, it says, The Lord said unto my Lord, Sit thou at my right hand until I make thou enemies thou footstool. Now, another thing, too, you can do the comparison when you actually compare Solomon and his attributes to, to Yahweh Shai. Yeah, Solomon was given all wisdom. He knew all things. And so did Yahweh Shai. Because why? They are the same people. All right. So it says, a psalm of David, the Lord said unto my Lord, sit at my right hand until I make thy enemies thy footstool. All right. Now, real quick, let's go to the precept in which Jehovah Shai said it. You know, he said it and kind of revealed it. All right. He revealed it because he knew all things. Okay. So it says, Prof, this is Matthew chapter 22 and 41. While the Pharisees were gathered together, 
Yahweh Shai answered them, saying, Think ye, or uh, what think ye of the Messiah? Whose son is he? They say unto him, the son of David. All right, real quick. You know, why did they say that? And I quoted it earlier, but I'll read it real quick. This is the book of Isaiah, chapter 11, verse 1. It says, And there came, and there shall come forth a rod out of the stem of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. All right, because they knew that. They knew that, all right, that there would be a Messiah to come out of the root of David, which is the stem of Jesse. But they didn't consider Yahweh Shai to be that man, okay, to be the son of the Most High. Now, real quick, to lock you, you know, I'm kind of just flowing, all right, wanted to do a lesson while I did this walk, okay, so... Uh, it says, verse 2, and the spirit of Yahweh shall rest upon him, and the spirit of, it says, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge, and the fear of Yahweh, which Yahweh Shai had all of those attributes, man. Okay? It says, shall rest, it says, the spirit of Yahweh shall rest upon him, did not the Most High, when John the Baptist, he baptized Yahweh Shai, all right, which he said to Yahweh Shai, whose shoes I'm not able to latch it, roughly paraphrasing, meaning his shoes he's not able to fill because Yahweh Shai was before John, even though John the Baptist, you know, uh, was it was in motion with, with, with his ministry, all right, teaching baptism before Yahweh Shai came on the scene, but John the Baptist knew, knew, knew the truth. He had the spirit of Yahweh on him. So when he seen Yahweh Shai, you know, he, he told Yahweh Shai whose shoes I cannot fill, who come before him. So Yahweh Shai said, you know, keep the order, of course. And John the Baptist baptized Yahweh Shai. And when that happened, all right, the spirit of the Most High came in, all right, and said, this is my well-beloved son. And I'm roughly paraphrasing it. You could go back and read the story for yourself. All right, the account. But, you know, Yahweh said, this is my well-beloved son. All right. So it says, and the spirit of Yahweh shall rest upon him. And the spirit of the Most High was definitely in Yahweh Shai. Okay. It says, shall rest upon him the spirit of wisdom. Yahweh Shai had all wisdom. Okay. He had all the wisdom, man. All right. It says, an understanding. This, it says an understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of Yahweh. And to show you, you know, that Yahweh Shai had all understanding as well and wisdom was because he cut, he cut these Pharisees. He was saying things that went over their head that they didn't even understand, showing you he knew all things. You see? Verse 3. And shall make him of quick understanding in the fear of Yahweh, and he shall not judge after the sight of his eyes, neither reprove after the hearing of his ears. Now, when I read that, it, it just makes me think of the account. All right, when um, just one account it come to mind when um, Mary Magdalene. All right, three men approached Yahweh Shai and threw Mary Magdalene on the ground before him, where she was an adulteress. And these three men, they wanted to condemn, they wanted Yahweh Shai to condemn her, you know? And they wanted him, you know, to, to condemn her. But what Yahweh Shai did was that he ignored them. And he looked down and started writing in the sand. Now, what he was writing, you know, you can only guess it must have to been their sins because the scriptures go into how it says one by one, they each started to leave, you know, and left her kneeling down before the Lord. And when Yahweh Shai looked up, he asked her, he said, where's, where's those men, you know? And then he told her, he said, go and sin no more. 
All right, so he didn't condemn her. He gave her the chance to repent. So what it was Yahweh Shai's uh, mission when he came the first time, all right? When he came the first time, he was to give remission and repentance of sins, you see? So, you know, I'm just saying, when I read this, it makes me think of that account. So I'll read it again, verse three. And shall make him of quick understanding in the fear of Yahweh, and he shall not judge after the sight of his eyes, neither reprove after the hearing of his ears. It says, but with righteousness shall he judge the poor and reprove with equity for the meek of the earth. And he shall smite the earth with the rod of his mouth and with the breath of his lips, and he shall slay the wicked. All right, and Yahweh Shai prophesied as well. He taught in the synagogues. You know, he was teaching. He, he taught also on a ship to a multitude of Israelites. You know, he fed them. He performed miracles. It says, but, let me read verse 4 again. But with, but with righteousness shall he judge the poor and reprove with equity for the meek of the earth. And he shall smite the earth with the rod of his mouth. And it said also how his, his voice was like as many waters. Okay. Yahweh Shai had, he, hey, scriptures tell us he was an austere man. So you know, he he was he he had that 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 voice, man. One of those, he had one of them guys that uh you know today that you know got that sort of voice that echoes when they speak. Yahweh Shai had that sort of voice, man, when he spoke. So anyway, it says, and he shall smite the earth with the rod of his mouth, and with the breath of his lips shall he slay the wicked. It says and righteousness shall be the girdle of his loins and the faithfulness of his girdle of his rings. It says, now verse six, it says, the wolf also shall dwell with the lamb and the leopard shall lie down with the kid, which is the goat. It says, and the calf and the young lion and the fattens together and a little child shall lead them. Now this is going into the kingdom, okay? which is gonna be here on earth, where the Lord is gonna actually bring rest to the whole earth, man. He's gonna bring rest to the land, okay? Now, I think of um, how, you know, we as uh, Israelites, and the scriptures say, surely oppression, oppression make of a wise man mad. You know, we get angry, we, we get angry, we get upset, you know? We pray unto the Most High for mercy, you know, to be delivered from the hands of our enemy. Okay, mainly Esau, Edom, and these other nations. And even protection from two thirds of our own people, man, because they're just as wicked as well. But you gotta also remember that the, the creatures, all of the Lord's creatures, the animals, okay, um, the birds, the fowls, they all need peace too, because they're not at rest. While this devil is ruling, he's destroying the planet Earth, okay? He's destroying the ordinance, man. You know, from the last time I heard, and I'm not too sure, but from what I heard, they said the birds don't fly south no more. All right, let me give a disclaimer. That music is not, I'm not playing that music in the background as a disclaimer. As a disclaimer, I'm not playing that music in the background. All right? But anyway, as I heard, you know, don't quote me, but you can probably look it up, you know, that they said the birds don't fly south anymore. You know, so everything is all out of order because of this devil, man. He even put these animals into captivity, but he say that he's saving them. If you're saving them, why are you putting them in zoos? You know, them, them, them monkeys, you know, like them apes. They know, man. You can look at their face and can tell they're being a, they're being a laughing stock, man. All right? They're being a laughing stock. And even them animals know, man. Them lions and tigers know, man. Then they're mixed breeding seeds, man. So yeah, we need rest. But what, remember that the Lord is gonna bring the earth rest. Oh, another one that come to mind is Isaiah the 14th chapter. How the Lord said that the trees, all right, shall be at rest. 
uh, I believe it's, it goes into how I said no fella shall come up against them. And I believe when you go in that word fella, it means to hewn, which means to cut down. Because it's Esau who cut down these trees, man. So even the tree is going to be at rest when Yahweh Shai come give the land rest, which is the earth. Okay? And um, what was it, last year? Uh, I believe it was last year or the beginning of this year. You know how time goes so fast. They was uh, intentionally burning uh, the forests of the Amazon, man. The Amazon rainforest. All those fires, man. And killing them animals and things like that, man. All for this man, this devil's control over the Lord's creatures. So really, when you look at things, you know, you need, you will want the Lord to come and deliver us from this devil, man. Because, you know, we're all suffering. Every creature of the Most High. So he has to be stopped, man. So let's get back. It says, the wolf also shall dwell with the lamb and the leopard shall lie down with the kid and the calf and the young lion and the fatlings together and the little child shall lead them and the cow and the bear shall feed their young ones shall lie down together and the lion shall eat the straw like the ox so they're gonna be in peace and no more animal wars man you watch the um you might watch uh the animal channel and he saw here category it and and uh you know sub you know category the animals in certain ways you know here say uh animal wars it's a whole uh category of animal wars lions versus hyenas hyenas versus lions a lion's pride versus another lion's pride all right bird wars you know you got even sea wars man like the fish fish wars what you got seals that at a certain time when the current is flowing and they go chase after those penguins you know you can just watch the animal planet and see man they no longer going to eat and fight each other man all right the lord's going to change the circle of life because why everything is going to be at peace through yahweh shot man so call halal la yahweh bahashim yahweh shot so it says and the cow and the bear shall feed their young ones shall lie down together and the lion shall eat straw like the ox and the suckling child shall play on the hole of the axe and the weaned child shall put his hand on the cockatrice den it says there they shall not hurt nor destroy in all my holy mountain showing you how we're going to be changed okay we're going to be made perfect we're going to have those extraterrestrial bodies okay we're not going to get hurt no matter what we do we're not going to cry sorrow what's that revelations 21 okay he's going to take away the pain he's going to take away any hurt you know we're not going to fall and scrape our knee again <laughs> you know what's break a leg break an ankle none of that man nothing shall hurt us man under the lord's holy mountain which which is his government all right because the lord is the true government the heavenly father is the true governor of the earth and of the universe all right i was watching the elder brother from uh, la and the brother had a video he was doing he was driving and, then, and at the end of the video he let a lot of clips be a lot of clips uh that esau uh was revealing about the cern you know a particle collider and how they opening up portals and shit because they're trying to tap into the fourth dimension with the most high rim where the most high sits on his throne you know but it's all according to prophecy because it's going to be the downfall and the end of his kingdom and rulership man you know gotta watch that last the video that video again you know because there was a lot being said there man that was a very edifying video from the brother you know so anyway verse 9 they shall not hurt nor destroy they shall not hurt they shall not hurt nor destroy in all my holy mountain for the earth shall be full of the knowledge of Yahweh as the waters cover the sea it says verse 10 and in that day there shall be a root of Jesse which stand for an ensign of the people to it shall the Gentiles seek and the rest shall be glorious all right now that ensign let's look up the word ensign 
Okay, quick Collins English Dictionary. It says ensign. An ensign is a flag flown on a ship to show what country the ship belongs to. All right, so an ensign is a, is a sign, all right, to identify what it is and what it represents, okay? So what is Yahweh Shai? What do he represent, okay? What do he represent, okay? He represents his people. He represents the Most High, okay? So he's that ensign, and when he came on the scene, he gave glory, all the glory to the Father. You know, and even, he even said, why call, why call me good? There's nothing good but the Father. All right? And uh, another thing, too, because, you know, I'm touching on a subject here that uh, Solomon was Yah uh, it, uh, is Yahawashai, okay? Or Yahawashai was Solomon, whatever how you want to put it. But remember, Yahawashai laid his life down, all right, for his sins that he committed and also for the sins for the Israelites, starting with the elect. All right, I wanted to charm in and bring this precept out. This is Hebrews chapter 7, verse 24. But this man, because he continueth ever, have an unchangeable priesthood, wherefore he is able also to save them to the uttermost that come unto the most high by him, seeing he ever liveth to make intercession for them. For such an high priest became us, who is holy, harmless, undefiled, separated from sinners, and made higher than the heavens, who needeth not daily as those high priests to offer up sacrifice first for his own sins and then for the people's. For this he did once when he offered up himself. For the law maketh men, for the law maketh men high priests which have infirmity, but the word of the oath which was since the law maketh the son who is consecrated forevermore. All right. So showing you in verse 27, who needeth not daily as those high priests to offer up sacrifice first for his own sins and then for the people's. For this he did once when he offered up himself. And that was Yahawashai. All right. And you would say, well, when did Yahawashai sin? He sinned when he was Solomon. Because we know that Yahawashai was perfect. Okay. When he came. In, the, in his body form of Yahawashah, the Savior, all right, to lay his life down for his people, starting with the elect. So you got to keep that in mind. So anyway, it says, an ensign is a flag flown on a ship to show what country the ship belongs to. So it's a sign. <clears throat> it's a sign, all right? And you understand that sign and you know what it represents. See, Yahawashai is coming back for his people, all right? Not, not the world, man. All right, but but the, but the elect of Israel and the world is going to witness it and, and know it and understand it and respect it, you know. So it says, which shall stand for an ensign for the people. All right, even the Gentile is able to come back in through Yahusha, which are the Gentiles, because it says here, I may be jumping the gun, moving fast or talking fast. It says, um, which shall stand for the ensign of the people to it shall the Gentile seek and his rest shall be glorious. So we got to go into the word Gentile. All right, give me one second. This is the word Gentile, right? Because this is another Gentile. That word is a stumbling block to those that doesn't have, that don't have understanding, who the Most High haven't given understanding to. You know, there's stumbling blocks in these scriptures. All right. So if you don't understand what the word Gentile mean, which you know, in the Zion Divan Bible Dictionary, the word Gentile mean usually it means a non-Israelitish people. All right. But we're gonna read it here in the blue letter and Strong's. 1471 the Hebrew word is goyim all right or goy 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 right which is goyim all right now it says nation people 
nation people, usually of non-Hebrew people. Then you got of descendants of Abraham, of Israel, a swarm of locusts, other animals. All right. So the point is usually of non-Hebrew people because it was the Israelites who are also called Gentiles. All right. After the Most High dispersed us and scattered us throughout the world and among all nations. Okay. Our people took on the customs and the ways of the heathens and they forgot their culture and they forgot their inheritance. They forgot who they were as the most highest chosen people. All right. You even can go into the word uh, Hellenist, being Hellenized. All right. That, that, when you look that up, that was um, Jews who spoke Greek and took Greek customs, who took up the Greek customs and worshiped false gods, man, and spoke Greek. But these were Jews, man, Israelites. All right. So we go back and read this again. You know, it says, uh, let me grab it again. And in that day, there shall be a root of Jesse, which shall stand for the ensign of the people. To it shall the Gentiles seek. The Gentiles seek and his rest shall be glorious. All right. And then, you know, eventually when your shot crack those clouds and bring the order of the heavens here in the earth. All right. Which is heaven on earth. You other nations are going to serve our Lord. But as of right now. It's our people who has to serve, let me say the elect of our people who has to serve the Lord. The Lord has to start with his house first. And once he gets his house in order, the elect is sealed, we're changed. Then you other nations, you're going to go into captivity and serve us as servants and handmaids. All right, because that's the way the Most High designed it. All right, and you're going to worship our power. And it's only going to be one God in the earth. One known God, no more false gods, okay? And that God is Yahweh, all right? Which is he, he, he is or he to be. Or you can also say his name is he exists. All right? And I gotta say Bahashem Yahawashai, which Yahawashai name, all right? In the Hebrew is he deliverer, okay? Or you can say he savior. So Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shai is going to reign the holy mountain here on the earth, man. All right? Which is the most highest government, not Esau's government. So I know I'm kind of, you know, I'm just flowing, man. So bear with me. I hope this lesson is edifying. All right? So let's get back to Matthews. Uh, I was at Matthews where Yahweh Shai was speaking. Matthews 22 and 41. It says, while the Pharisees were gathered together, Yahawashai asked them, saying, What think ye of the Messiah? Whose son is he? They say unto him, The son of David. It says, He said unto them, How then do David in, the, in spirit call him Lord? Saying, Yahweh, and Yah, excuse me, Yahweh said unto my Lord, Sit thou on my right hand. Till I make thou enemies thou footstool. If David then called him Lord, how is he his son? All right, because why? Yahweh Shai was King Solomon. All right, now those that can receive it, hey, receive it. May Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai bless you, you know, to increase your faith in this truth. The more we learn, to, the more strengthen our faith, man, and believing in our Lord, because we got to know the gospel. You got to understand the word, man. You have to know who you worship. All right. So it says, verse 46, and no man was able to answer him a word. Neither durst any man from that day forth ask him any more questions. So he cut them, man. All right. He cut them up to where they wouldn't ask any more questions because he made them look foolish. You see? See, Yahweh Shai is our everything, man. All right. Now. That's the lesson, but I got a few precepts. I'll just read, you know, these precepts are, uh, uh, you know, they hit home. So I'll just read them and I'll close out. You know, like I said, I'm just flowing in the spirit. You know, Lord willing, I pray this lesson is edifying, man. All right. It says, Jeremiah 23 and 5. Behold, the days come, saith Yahweh, that I will raise unto David a righteous branch, and a king shall reign 
and prosper and shall execute judgment and justice in the earth. In his days, Judah shall be saved and Israel shall dwell safely. And this is his name whereby he shall be called the Lord of the Lord, the Lord, our righteousness. All right. Now, this is Isaiah chapter nine, verse six. For unto us, a child is born. Unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty Power, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace there shall be no end. Upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom to order it and to establish it with judgment and with justice from henceforth even forever. The zeal of Yahweh, which is Lord of hosts, will perform this. Woo! All right, because Yahweh shall have a, a, a world without end. All right? When he makes his second return and he snatches the crown from these heathens and their lands and their governments, all right, he's going to wear the crown. And he's going to reign in the earth forever. All right? As it's written in Daniel 7 and 27. All right? An everlasting kingdom. All right, you know, scriptures say uh, he shall take the kingdom. So let me read this last last one I got. This is Luke chapter one and thirty one. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb, and bring forth a son, and shall call his name Yahawashai. He shall be great, and shall be called the son of the highest. And Yahweh shall give unto him the throne of his father David and he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever and his kingdom there shall be no end see so Lord willing I pray this lesson was edifying for those of the hopeful elect you know hopefully you get something from it to build upon your faith toward the Lord you know because at the end of the day it's all about faith and you know, the Lord is going to prove, all right, to the world who is his, all right? And that's going to be done by those who keep the faith unto the end, all right? He said, F uh, gold is tried in the fire, you know, acceptable men in the furnace of adversity. If we're roughly paraphrasing it, if I'm saying that right, you know, it's in the book of Sirach, the second chapter, all right? And um, also, too, second edge of 16, toward the end as well all right then you shall know who my chosen yeah that's a good one too but uh it's all about faith man you know and we're gonna we're gonna we, we we know who got the truth but it's gonna it's gonna adorn in people's minds and it's gonna stamp it it's gonna establish it without a shadow of a doubt in those who don't believe and you're gonna have to pay homage you're gonna have to respect and you're gonna be a witness as well when your high shot crack those clouds and you're going to see who the lord's people are you're going to know who his prophets are as well you know so if so like i said again it's all about faith you know and we want to have that so we can get delivered and also it's by works as is it as it, it is it's explained okay second edges nine you know works and faith can't just be a hearer of the word you got to be a doer of the word all right so lord willing I pray this lesson be edifying to those of the whole four elect. I want to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, Bahashim, Racha, Kodash. Double honors to my apostles and elders of Great Millstone who rule well. Salutations to the Lord's whole four elect scattered abroad. Shalom.